included in ADR 25 are new provisions for the carriage of asbestos in bulk. And in my mind, this is a very welcome addition, especially for those people involved with contaminated land remediation, where you may have asbestos contaminated materials which do not meet the special provision 168 exemption and which are not practical to pack. In the UK, there have previously been authorisations to allow this situation, so we're not reinventing the wheel here, but of course, for the carriage of such a potentially dangerous material in bulk, to allow this under ADR has required some very specific provisions to be added. The carriage of asbestos in bulk will mean the carriage of asbestos that is not exempted by special provision 168 and not packaged. Let's take a look at how these new provisions are applied in ADR. From ADR 2025, carriage in bulk is authorised through the addition of codes VC1 and VC2 in column 17 of the dangerous goods list for both asbestos entries. BC1 permits carriage in bulk in sheeted vehicles, sheeted containers or sheeted bulk containers and VC2 permits carriage in bulk in closed vehicles, closed containers or closed bulk containers. The types of waste allowed for carriage in bulk are identified by new special provision 678. Bulk carriage is only going to be allowed between the generating site and the final disposal site, with some allowance for intermediate storage. Examples of the types of waste allowed to be transported in bulk include asbestos contaminated soil and construction site waste. And I actually like the way they word the new text at Special Provision 678 because it's worded to the opposite of Special Provision 168 and I like the way this directs you to which special provision is most appropriate because quite often asbestos can be exempt in these situations via special provision 168. So new special provision 678 sets out the types of waste and journeys allowed. It also requires additional documents to be carried and statements in the transport document by reference to a new paragraph at 5.4.1.1.4. I say new because the previous paragraph there had been deleted. Either VC1 or VC2, in conjunction with the general provisions at 7.3.1, plus new provisions outlined in AP12, dictate the types of containment required. Please pay a particular attention to 7.3.1.6 because this may rule out some kinds of bulk vehicles, such as walking floor trailers, depending on their construction. In all cases, there's no requirement for the vehicle or container to be approved in accordance with chapter 6.11. The new provisions at AP12 require the asbestos to be carried in at least one, sometimes two, one inside the other, double lined container bags which are placed inside the bulk load compartment, in this case in our photo, a skip. The provisions here are written in such a way that you would typically use only one container bag per load compartment. Although this is not made explicit here, it is at the new CV38 which we will come on to in a moment. Contaminated objects and construction site waste are limited to seven tonnes per container bag and in all cases, the mass of the waste must not exceed the design capacity of the container bag specified by the manufacturer of said container bag. Further details for the design of container bags are given in AP12. Details of the documentation requirements for the container bag which must be carried on the vehicle are given at 5.4.1.1.4a. 
The loading and unloading procedures for carriage in bulk are given in new special provision CV38. Included here are further decontamination requirements given in addition to the standard decontamination requirements already imposed by CV13. In most circumstances, compliance with CV38 will probably require a procedure to be drawn up, especially for unloading where standard practice in the UK is to tip the waste into an asbestos cell at a landfill site. The unloading procedure must be jointly agreed between the carrier and the consignee, so in the UK following standard practice that will be between the skip truck or bulk vehicle operator and the landfill site operator. And if an unloading procedure is drawn up, it must be carried on the vehicle in accordance with 5.4.1.1.4b. Note that restrictions for the loading and unloading of UN 2212 in a public place were already applied by CV1. As you can see, the new provisions allow for the carriage of asbestos in bulk only in very specific circumstances, so it's not carte blanche. When asbestos is carried in bulk, all of the carriage provisions will apply. There are no thresholds for the carriage of dangerous goods in bulk. Indeed, even when empty but unclean, the bulk container or vehicle will still be subject to all relevant ADR carriage provisions. Whilst the new rules in ADR 25 do not propose to require container or vehicle approval for the carriage of asbestos in bulk, please be mindful that many bulk containers or load compartments may not meet the general requirements outlined in ADR. In addition, despite sheeted vehicles and containers being allowed by ADR, or even unsheeted vehicles or containers in some circumstances, these may not be looked upon favourably by national health and safety authorities, such as the HSE, when you are following their codes of practice, which in the UK, for example, in their current form, prohibit this. Perhaps they will be updated for these new provisions. For carriage in bulk in the UK, different orange plate marks will be required to those of ADR. What I'm getting at here is that the bulk carriage provisions of ADR are quite complicated. Which is why, if you're going to be involved in the carriage of asbestos in bulk as a consigner, loader or carrier, you will be required to appoint a dangerous goods safety advisor. We recommend that you talk through with your DGSA the proposed requirements for the carriage of asbestos in bulk to ensure that you can comply with the new provisions, some of which cross-reference between themselves as to what is going to be applied and allowed, so it can be quite complex at first read. You may also need to have procedures in place, especially for loading or loading. Your DGSA will be able to help ensure that your new procedures are in compliance with the regulations.